Football! Hey. Welcome everybody to episode 117 of Football is Life. I'm Ethan Cooney, joined, of course, as always, by Matt Powell. Hello, hello. And Nat Maymudez. Hello, hello. Great Ooh. intro. Waking waking us up here. Uh, hello, 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 hello. On this Saturday. Uh Two we, more for the people. <laughs> we we got a lot to get into. The playoffs have started, guys. Uh Inter Miami has played their first ever playoff game. So we we got that to talk about. We got the wild card games to talk about. Uh, we got, yeah, we we got a preview, the Sounders coming playoff game preview, NYCFC's playoff game preview, Nashville's play. Oh wait, oh wait. I guess I guess we don't have to do that. Uh, I guess so. So we can focus on other stuff. Uh, but uh, yeah, let's get right into talking about the playoffs. Uh, and uh, we're gonna get uh, started right with. Some stuff that doesn't make MLS look the greatest. Uh, mm. So obviously the wild card round is. Uh, this is the thing that was. Oh, the, should we talk about the playoffs first, or should we? Let's do decision day first. Let's go for decision day. Oh yeah. Uh, first, before we move into the playoffs, um, just in general, I mean, MLS will will is is trying to say that this is a good decision day. This decision <laughs> day going in, we already said. Uh, wasn't that there wasn't that much to be decided? Um, yeah, Matt, what were your thoughts on decision day this year? Uh, it's a little boring, but that's how it works out. Um, they there there wasn't much to be decided, and not much was decided. Not much surprising happened. Uh, I mean, so in the um at the very end, we do have some seeding changes. LA, the two LA teams switched. Um, uh, and yeah, that was exciting. Yeah. I don't know. Was that really? It's a. I don't think that was really. I don't know. It changed that like twice like in bit, but like time. everyone, everyone still is in the playoffs. It doesn't really. Well, yeah. It just yeah. means that uh, LAFC is feeding is not the most important. Different thing. is on a different path, um, which means it's where there's more of a chance that they will face the Sounders in the next round if they are to advance. But uh, honestly, just didn't um, do that much. Let's talk about uh, our specific games. NYCFC was what what could have made uh, a difference. What could have give, gave NYCFC a home game would have been if NYCFC beat Montreal. That is not what happened. Ethan, what were your thoughts on this game in Montreal? Yeah, just uh, just kind of a stinker. Like, I don't really know if there's really any other way to put it. Um, best case scenario for this game was we win uh, an Orlando lose and we finish in fourth place. Uh, and then what happened was pretty much the worst case scenario, which is that we finished sixth place, uh, which is what happened. And now we have to play against uh, Cincinnati, which is going to be great. Uh, I, you know, obviously... Not not an intimidating opponent at all, Cincinnati. Um, hey, you beat them the last time you played them. We did. We did beat them. So, like, you know, I'm not... And and we beat them uh, with, you know, their actual keeper in goal. You know, they didn't have an outfield player in there. But... Uh, okay. What's that supposed to mean? Just saying, we actually beat one of the best teams in the MLS, and we didn't have to, you know... They weren't they weren't on 10 men with a five foot seven guy in goal. Let's get to how, but so, so let's this get to how you, how you lost to Montreal. And, and, yeah. And my CFC, I, re, I don't know what happened. They just did not show up uh, to this game. Uh, well, actually, no, that's not true. Uh, they did show up first, like 15 minutes or something like that. Um, we were playing very well and I thought, we, we had many chances and we, we should have been 
uh, at least two up, one or two goals up. Uh, we couldn't finish our chances. Montreal score. And then right at the end of the second, at the end of the first half, um, Montreal score again, which was a really, really preventable goal. Uh, I was very disappointed in Tiago Martins on that play. Um, Caden Clark just kind of goes past him, but like he wasn't in the box. You just got to pull the guy down, like grab his shoulder and just yank down as hard as you can. They always say, you know, either the ball or the man goes past you, but not both. Um, so I think Tiago Martins should have taken one for the team, gone for a tactical foul there. Um, and we probably wouldn't have been 2-0 down going into the uh, into the second half. Um, yeah, and then just did not just did not show up at all. Just a very blank game. Uh, yeah, so in the, so with the result, that meant Montreal, uh, guaranteed that they would host the wild card game. Um, not the, again, not the end of the world, uh, for NYCFC, um, Winning. not, a, yeah, avoiding Miami, obviously in the first round. Um, let's talk about the other games from the Eastern conference that were interesting on decision day. Obviously we saw, um, so DC, uh, they started the day in the wild card spot and end up losing three zero to Charlotte, which means that DC, uh, misses the playoffs. Uh, although Christian Benteke walked away with the golden boot, Matt, what are your thoughts on, uh, the fact that, uh, DC has pulled off this feat? Are oh, you muted, Matt? When's the last time someone won the golden <laughs> boot and missed the playoffs? Like this is a total failure of a team <laughs> outside of one player. And shout out to Christian Menteke for um something pulling off something like this. Like like scoring this many goals on a team that's bad enough to miss the playoffs is incredible and awesome and one of the hilarious things that uh makes up MLS. It, it's it's funny. <laughs> But he couldn't even score in this game. I mean, DC just needed – they needed to tie. They didn't even have to win this game against Charlotte. And they come out – and they lose this game 3-0. Like, DC doesn't deserve to be in the playoffs if you're gonna, against this Charlotte team, which is like – the Char- Charlotte isn't bad, but they're also – they're not great. Um, they don't – they don't have anyone uh, – super exciting or super scary that most teams have to worry about. So very disappointing uh, for DC. Uh, Atlanta, obviously, so Atlanta beat Orlando, and that helped Atlanta uh, Atlanta get into the playoffs, um, uh, along with Philadelphia losing to Cincinnati. That's how we end up with Atlanta getting into the wildcard game. But uh, the the game that everyone was watching was to see if Miami would beat the New England point record. They were playing New England. New England scored two goals first. Um, and in typical Miami fashion, Miami came back. Both of the goals that New England scored, I mean, very boring. But it's just like this, we've seen this time and time again from New England. Um, and then Luis Suarez would come to score two goals and then Messi would score a hat trick uh, later and just like an insane performance uh, from inter Miami. Um, So with that, Miami sets the points record. Uh, What does this, Ethan, what do you think this means for defy for Miami uh, in claiming uh, the, the, did uh the best MOS team ever title. Doesn't matter until they win the cup. Yeah. Like genuinely. Sorry, I... Saucer Question. <laughs> Fuck Saucer Question, yeah. man. The supporter shield is <laughs> not harder than the MLS Cup. Um New England break the point record, win the supporter shield. 
get knocked out by New York City FC in the conference semifinals in their home. And then New York City FC won the MLS championship that year. I would venture to say that NYCFC team was better than that New England team. Though that New England team had a very good uh, Carl's Hill, though he still shouldn't have won MVP that year because he missed a lot of games. Um, should have gone to Tati. But, you know, that's that's a I'm, – I'm getting into beef from three years ago, more or less. Um, okay, but also yeah. this important year – uh, the it's points not a record has schedule. been broken. This is like the third time the points record has been broken in the last 10 years. Who gives a shit? Like, it really doesn't matter until you win the MLS Cup. Yeah, and, and again, it's not a balanced schedule. Uh, Singly, mm-hmm. we've proved that the Western Conference was better this year. I mean, yes, there are no, we teams. No, the Eastern Conference, no, we decided it, this. It's more balanced. The Eastern Conference, the Western Conference is, is way more balanced. Teams. There are more te- teams in the Western Conference have more points in but total. But the best the teams Conference. in the MLS are in the Eastern Conference. But you MLS. also, but also the 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 worst teams are also in the Eastern Conference. The we worst went, team we is in the Western Conference. This is true. We went team by team, and we said, who would you rather play, this team or this team? We totally did this exercise. Yeah, we went over this. We decided this. It's not. No, 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 no. no. You look at the point. I, I do not agree with this <laughs> with this, with this this logic this year. We need, when we need, we look at the uh, number of Jamie, points that the Western Conference yeah, has. Get the stats guy on. Jamie, this. pull the clip. <laughs> One thing that I do want to talk about from this uh, Miami game was a goal, and there, this actually have there were a couple of plays uh, for decision day. There were there was a, a fair amount of plays that were. Um, uh, I felt like there was too many times where we went to review and stuff was called mm-hmm. back for uh, being deemed clear and obvious. I did not think that there were many calls that were clear and obvious or it should have been uh, given, but. Uh, uh, Bobby Wood gets called uh, for a handball, um, which on a goal, which would have made it three three, would have tied the game, uh, and could have changed everything before uh, Miami went on to win to score six more goals. Uh, Bobby Wood draws the save from Drake Counter, and the ball comes directly off of Counter and hits. Uh, Bobby Wood, it hits his his arm, but his arm is directly in front of his body. Now, uh, this was deemed uh, the the goal is called back because the the hand the handball rule says that if any if it touches any part of the hand or the arm uh, and then goes into the goal, then it's a handball. Um, I'm really just, I'm really just annoyed by the rule at this point. Uh, with that, it's like uh, anytime there's a handball and then it goes into the goal, uh, we're gonna call it because it's it's not the normal way that the handball rule works. Like I feel, I mm-hmm. think if the if this is somewhere else on the field. I don't. I think people are not saying this is a handball because his chest is directly behind uh, him, and so it's unfortunate because of how the word, how it's worded. I think they, unfortunately, they did get it right, but the call is is wrong. This should not be a handball because it is the ball is hitting his chest, and also it comes so, like. The entire time he's trying to hit it with his chest. Um, do you have any thoughts about this rule, Ethan? Um, and like, if like if you're if the hand is literally in front of your chest, then that shouldn't be a handball, right? I, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not very familiar with this Bobby Wood play. Um, 
I I think the handball rule is is kind of fine as it is. Um, there's so much hullabaloo over it, especially in the Premier League, which I I know they have a different handball rule, and that handball rule is always changing, and you've always got the pundits talking about it over and over again. Um, I I do think that we're overcomplicating the handball rule a little bit. I like I feel like. If the hand or arm is involved and and it like genuinely influences the play, I, I, I feel like that's that's what we should be looking at. Um, and there are definitely, you know, kind of get into semantics a little bit um, and some technicalities with this rule now. Well I, well, I just feel like there has to either be exceptions or there has to be literally no exceptions. Like we're, if we're going to say like, Oh, we're we're not gonna call it because it was not in an empty. Where it's it's not a hand. If it clearly hit the the hand, but right. we're not. But then people are gonna be like, oh, we're not gonna call it because it was in in a natural position. Um, even though, it, uh, yeah, it's in the natural. I position, guess that's where judgment call calls it. come into play. Um, um, but but for this, it's like, it's like the ball. If if it doesn't hit the hand, it's gonna just hit his body, and the same result is gonna happen. Right. But it, but but because it goes into a goal, we're going to call uh, the handball. Like I think I think mm -hmm. it's 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 the exception that it's that uh, it hits the hand and goes into the goal. It's do it stupid. It's either just gonna be like if it hits the hand, no matter what, it's just that's the rule. We're calling it like I would like that would be better, even if it it's unfortunate if it hits you in an natural position. But that would be better than how it is now, where it's like, oh, if it's not like sometimes if it's natural, we're not going to call it, even if everyone sees it hits the hand. Matt, what do you think? No, I agree. There's too much ambiguity in the rule right now, and it opens the door for controversy. And I feel like. I don't know what the change is because I feel like the rule makes total sense to me as is, but um, but it, it it's complicated, and I don't know if this decision is the one that uh, changes the the tides of football as a whole. Um, <laughs> I think that might have to come from a World Cup game or yeah, something a little bit more. Uh, what's the word? Important. Yeah, I was thinking that too. A game that matters. Yeah, but um. This that was kind of nice, but um, and then this like a long with a long S. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, no, no. The rule's too ambiguous. Uh, I don't know what I would change, but I know that I would change something. So we'll see. It won't happen because of this, and it won't happen for a minute if it does. All right, let's talk about. Uh, we'll move over to the Western Conference. So, uh, uh, for for notable results, so NFC they claim the number one seed. Um, after uh, at first they were losing to San Jose, um, and uh, then they come back and they win three to one. Um, and because they so uh, because they win, and Houston ended up beating the Galaxy two to one. That is why the Galaxy moved to the second seed. LFC moves uh, up. Uh, they finish first, same number of points as the Galaxy, but they have a plus. They had a plus twenty goal differential to the Galaxy's plus nineteen. So that is why uh, they finish below. Um, and uh, this is not something new for the Galaxy uh, to play. Uh, the Dynamo on Decision Day, of course, we go back to the years of Zlatan. Um, <laughs> it was Houston it, uh, Houston knocked the Galaxy out of playoff contention um, because of that. So it, I, it, for some reason, the Galaxy just cannot get over the line um, hmm. or just cannot get over Houston on Decision Day. Um, which uh, honestly, I love to see. I'm not. I'm not. Don't have a problem with that. Um, 
RSL ended up beating Vancouver. This was another reason with the Sounders result that uh, the Sounders moved from the third position to the fourth position. Um, Minnesota beat St. Louis um, to give them three points and solidify their position. Um, but uh, we'll get into the Sounders game. Playing Portland, the only game against Portland uh, in Seattle this year. Uh, and Sounders score first. It was Yamar who scored his first goal of the year for the Sounders. The defender of the – robbed of defender of the year. <laughs> should have, I mean, Jackson Reagan ends up getting nominated. And if you look at stats on who's the best defender – Compared to the other candidates, uh, Jackson Reagan should win this hands down, even though he's not going to. It's going. It's to probably going to be Jordi Alba. It's going to be Jordi Alba. Um, um, Which is crazy because he's he's like a he's, he's barely a defender. Yeah, this is like yeah. giving it to um, who was the Cincinnati outside back that was scoring all those goals? Oriano. Yeah. It, who, who I believe did get nominated for newcomer of the year. Yeah. Um, I mean, newcomer's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's also funny that we have defender of the year, but we don't actually have forward of the year. That's just like the MVP, the MVP. award. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, they don't have midfielder of the year as well. It's just even though it's, uh, I feel like a defender should be able to win. the The year uh, a, so. a defender wins MVP, what does that? What did? What would a defender have to do to win that MVP award? Like, do they have to score double digit goals, and <laughs> the keeper has to have like fifteen shutouts? They have to have a, yeah, a match that know. they've had to have let in like one goal. Uh, but we go to but back to the Timbers game. Uh, Timbers had literally nothing in this game. They just like they were they were just playing like shit, just uh, flopping all the time. And uh, I have major problems with MOS for the referee that was doing this game. I looked up who the referee was before this game, and I was like, who the fuck is this? And that's because. <laughs> Ismir Pe uh, Pesimesh, uh has never uh, – he's not been in the league that long. He has never done an MLS playoff game. Uh, he has had controversy uh, before. Um, he was mm -hmm. in charge of an Atlanta game two years ago, and uh, after that game, someone created a change.com uh, – Paul to just get him to never ref again. <laughs> um, he has had controversy before, and he should not be doing this game. I mean, like you can say, like people are like, oh, like referees, like uh, like everyone, every referee is gonna have like their first like uh, hard game, like like yeah. you gotta like give people new games. You come on, we know where <laughs> this is going. It's Seattle, Portland. We hate each other. Give us an experienced ref. You literally have an experienced ref as the fourth official. Victor Rivas is just standing on the side. Put him in the middle here. <laughs> this is a, I mean, this is a sham from, uh, from pro referees from MLS. Um, if the refereeing was better and more consistent, this game would have had a fair result uh, because the fact that Portland did not get a single yellow card in this game is insane. They, uh, we had uh, multiple, multiple Sounders got cards for dissent. Um, and uh, it has not been cleared what the Sounders said, but there were multiple times where Portland players uh, got up, and look to yell at the referee in the same way that Sounders players did. Uh, mm. So the consistency there is terrible. Actually, I guess there was there was one yellow card, and it was to Phil Neville in the ninety fourth <laughs> minute of stoppage time. Something mm. that literally does not matter at all. 
what is the point of showing a yellow card there uh, to the coach at the end of the game? Yeah, it's it's it's, uh, yeah. it's just like a um, goalkeeper with time wasting as well. The Timbers had no business being in this game. They had no business. I mean, the goal that we gave up, if uh, fair to Anthony to find finish, should not have happened. It was really their only attack. But the Timbers, because of this result, which ends one-one, end up walking out with the con- with the uh, uh, with the Cascadia Cup, which is just so bullshit. Um, as they finish. <laughs> behind in the standings of both the Sounders and the White Cup, White Caps, and they won it on goal differential is how they they take home the Cascadia Cup. It's just disgraceful refereeing. <laughs> they, well, there's, that's the only thing to say about that. Uh, uh, but uh, as, yeah. Were you well, say if you want to... Well, yeah, I was going to say, if you want to, you know, lighten the mood, feel a little bit better, you can talk about what happened uh, when Portland played the Whitecaps. I, I, so, I mean, yes. So we get right into the wild card game. And this did help. I mean, leaving leaving <laughs> this game against the, the Timbers, um, I was like, it's okay. Like, I know I'd like Vancouver has to take them down. Like I'm looking at seating, and I'm like, I don't know, if, like it's like, I'm not, I'm not thinking about that. We're on the same side as LAFC right now. I'm just, whoever's playing the Timbers has to beat them. Vancouver is gonna beat them. Um, Vancouver's hosting the game. Uh, like, well, of course, Vancouver's gotta take them down. <laughs> They're gonna be at home in Vancouver. Yeah. Well. But then, this is the even. But then somehow MLS has topped themselves. From putting his mirror, uh, Peck Mitch in uh, <laughs> as the referee, uh, or maybe the Vancouver front office uh, has has topped themselves as Vancouver announced uh, before before I think the official before this actually went official um, that they would that if they finish eighth. They would not be able to host the wild card game because BC Place had already been booked for uh, some some dirt bike racing. Yeah, some uh, random event. <laughs> some event which was ha- happening on uh, the Tuesday before this game was scheduled. The game is on Wednesday, um, uh, but still, they would not have time to do it. So the game was moved to Portland. Um, this is super disgraceful from uh, Major League Soccer um, and the Vancouver Whitecaps. Uh, that uh, first of all, Vancouver it means that uh, clearly to me this means that Vancouver thought that they were going to be out, that they did not think they were making the playoffs. Because they're like, oh, we'll schedule something here. We're not going to be playing this time. Um, I do not think I'm not giving Vancouver the benefit of the doubt that they thought they were going to not have to play in the wild card game. I think it's pretty clear they thought they were going to be out and that's why they scheduled this. Um, but the fact that they couldn't play anywhere in Canada yeah, that's, is, yeah. is terrible. That's hard to believe. Like, I mean, like uh, Portland, obviously, like this is classic MLS. MLS needs to sell tickets. So they're going to have it in one of the stadium. This game should never... Um, it should not have been in Portland. If it was going to be with it being important, I think that Portland didn't deserve the the uh, home field advantage. They could they should have played this game. They should have they should have played this game behind closed doors. Um, if I'm a Vancouver fan, m- making the playoffs midweek, and I'm like. And I hear that I have to go to another country to watch my team play. I'm annoyed. Yeah. Matt, what do you think about the stadium situation? Uh, it's embarrassing. And it's embarrassing that they couldn't just reclaim it for a playoff game. Uh, yeah, the the event is like – what, what exactly was it? It's, it's hilarious that it was like not – like a concert <laughs> would be like, okay – a baseball game would be yeah. Like, if, this, if this was the Eras right. tour, I think we'd, yeah. uh, we'd all understand. 
but but some what was it dirt bike thing that's crazy yeah. like that's so <laughs> yeah it, How many it, people it, it just makes it makes yeah. the league look so small it yeah. does it, it, yeah. it is it's bush league so. yeah i mean the the thing is i bet there's a there's a decent chance that the second deck might have been opened for this event and it probably wouldn't have been open for the wild card game. All that being said, what a result. Uh, oh, my God, yeah. What a result uh, for the Whitecaps. I think no one really saw this come. I mean, I, I was obviously rooting for the Whitecaps. But uh, when this game was moved to Portland, and I think oh, another reason that made me mad was I was like, Portland's going to go through now. And I did not yeah. want that to happen. Did not expect that Portland would have maybe the thirty were the the worst thirty minutes of <laughs> of their playoff history, or maybe ever. Like just just uh, literally one of the worst run, the worst spans where they where uh, Vancouver scores five goals on them, um, and some of these goals are really nice. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, it was uh, Ryan Gold. Um, Ryan, Ryan Gold has a got, gets a hat trick in this game, and he scores um, a really nice chip for. Yeah, I think it was their nice. third goal. Um, which also the the chip here is not the easiest finish. Um, that it like the he no, could it's like a half volley. Someone else could have scored a much easier goal because the keeper is out of position on it. Um, but instead he pulls this just. This app, this pure class um, <laughs> goal, um, yeah. which was um, amazing um, to see. Uh, obviously, bef- um, before the game and uh, before the game, um, Phil Neville said uh, was asked like, w- like, what are his thoughts on the game getting moved? And he <laughs> uh, uh, made the comment that uh, clearly God is a Timbers fan. Um, oh, whereas, yeah. um, whereas, uh, some MLS people said, well, clearly more God is a dirt bike racing fan, uh, <laughs> because the game got moved, but, um, uh, Sartini, the Vancouver coach who is a quote machine, he has said <laughs> some of the wildest things, um, after this, uh, after this result said he didn't believe in God, um, absolutely. Yeah. God doesn't Amazing. exist for um, me. Matt, what are your thoughts on Phil Neville's comments? Um, and, and just like this this complete uh, blunder by the Timbers. I mean, they get knocked out. Vancouver is a team that attack through the width and have a, a, a good striker up top. And losing in that fashion is embarrassing. But I don't think losing to the Whitecaps is embarrassing. I mean the Van- the Vancouver Whitecaps have only ever won one playoff game before this game. Yeah, it's uh, a new ever, MLS. Ever since they joined the league in two in twenty eleven, this was their second playoff win. <laughs> and it's a new team, and and they're they're better than they ever have been by a large margin. All right, so do they have a chance against LAFC? No. <laughs> but that does not mean that they are not improving and really? something to be excited for going forward. Really? No one gave them a shot against the Portland Timbers. What do you mean? No one gave them a road. shot against the Portland Timbers? No one gave real? no <laughs> one gave them a shot. No one gave them a shot in this. I, game I wasn't asked, five. but I might have given them a shot. In yes, Portland? against the Timbers. Yeah, like I I don't I wasn't the Timbers aren't some unstoppable not force. Yeah. Going into they this game, Bulanga. going into this game, the Whitecaps were also the Whitecaps had lost four games in a row, and then they yeah, it's not it's not good form into the playoffs. I believe the Timbers were favored, but if you like to say that like no one gave them a chance in the way that I'm not going to give them a chance against LAFC, I don't think that's true. I think LAFC has honestly LAFC has been struggling themselves towards the end of the season and that was partially why this result them coming back against San Jose um, was also kind of surprising. I think they have a chance. I will. I am fully rooting for <laughs> Vancouver in this game. Um, Ethan, what are your thoughts? Um, 
does Vancouver have any hope? No, I mean, like, maybe, but no, like, realistically. I mean, you know, three-game series, it's it's unpredictable. You don't know, you don't know what might happen. Um, but I mean, realistically, they, no, they should, they really shouldn't have much of a chance against LAFC. I mean, LAFC are much better than they are. I just putting it simply. Mm -hmm. All right. So we will see what happens in, uh, that round of the playoffs. Um, one other thing, uh, that happened, um, in decision day, uh, Definitely could affect um, Colorado and uh, match prediction of if uh, Colorado gets a playoff victory and uh, uh, in in because Colorado in Colorado's game against um, uh, against Austin FC where they lost three to two, uh, Jordi Mihailovic ended up getting injured, had to be stretchered off the field um uh matt what do you think uh this means uh for colorado uh jordy mihailovich is an awesome player uh what is this it's the injury music <laughs> injury music <laughs> uh that was so jordy Ma- jordy is an awesome <laughs> player um i hate seeing someone hit his his of his talent level get injured he's a fringe usmnt talent um so this expands uh he's probably not um a real call up under pochettino but we can't pretend like we're not a couple injuries away from him making the roster um so you don't want to see him get injured you want to see him succeed um and you know whether or not my prediction is right the spirit of me calling that the worst team in the league last year is going to be pretty good this year. A functional MLS team this year was correct. So, okay, okay, Matt. Okay. I, it's it's, it's You're literally the true. Goal posts no, 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 no. I, I am. I will stand on my prediction, but I feel I feel vindicated by the fact that Colorado's gotten as far okay. as okay, okay, <laughs> okay. All right, let's move on. Let's move. Um, obviously, uh, I feel like that is. When you were, that is that is what goes through my head. Any injury, like, um, that's the music I hear. Um, all right, uh, let's talk a bit. Let's go over the bracket, um, uh, for uh the playoffs, and we'll get into previewing um our games. Here, I'll bring it up as I bring it up here. Playoff graphic. All right, here we go. So that's we'll start in the let's we'll start in the Western Conference. So obviously we're already talking about LAFC, um, not giving Vancouver much of a chance. Uh, whoever advances from that will play uh, either the Sounders or the Dynamo. Uh, so uh, we have not we so far this year we have. In both games in Seattle, the Sounders have uh, beaten the Dynamo one to zero. Um, I think in both of those games, Hector Herrera hasn't played. Um, mm. Though uh, I, I'm not really scared of Hector Herrera. He is overrated. Um, he is old. He is slow, and uh, and he for should not be getting he should not be getting as paid as much as he is uh for this league. Yeah, I'm feeling good. We we gotta we should make it past Houston. I mean, um I would have I'm not gonna say I, it's hard to say if we if we ended up playing if we Minnesota, um, which is how it was looking when we were the three to six when we were in that three to six um matchup. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I feel about the same as Houston. Um, I'm not scared by either Houston or Minnesota. Um, I'd be more scared about RSL, but we really should get the result. Um, our entire team um, is healthy for this game. Oh, the, the, I guess the one thing we, we left, I left out about the Sounders game 
versus Portland is that Obed Vargas, because Obed Vargas got two yellow cards in that game, one of the for mm. his first yellow card um, was for delaying the restart um, uh, for uh, being uh, within 10 yards after a free kick um, was taken, which is such a stupid, which is like, I'm not, I can't argue that one that much because this is a rule, but this is also mm-hmm. fairly called. Um, so True. the fact that this was given so quickly is stupid. Um, and then um, the second one uh, was given for dissent. And again, I don't know what he said um, to the referee. We, I'm not, not sure if it, if it crossed the line, he's got to know better. Um, but also there was so much dissent in this game. Um, and he was very quick to show this and this could make a difference. Obviously he'll be available mm-hmm. for that second neck. Um, and the Sounders also have Joe Paolo, um, who is back from injury. I expect Joe Paolo to slide right in, in midfield. Um, I'd be surprised if it was, if it wasn't Paolo, it could be Joss Atencio, but I expect, to see the exact same line that the Sounders have been playing. So that will be uh, Morris, Rothrock, Rusnak, uh, De La Vega, who almost he, uh, – De La Vega had multiple chances in this boarding game. Would have liked to see him score before the Timbers – before the playoffs started. Um, but uh, he is starting to catch form, so that is, that could be huge. Hopefully he has a good series. Um, then Paolo and Rodon, and then New Who, Reagan, Emar, and Alex Rodon and Fry um, is how we should line up. But uh, again, we'll, we should see. We'll see if that Paolo um, thing changes. Uh, if if it's Paolo or Atencio, um, we saw Roy Diaz for the last two minutes of the Sounders game. <laughs> He's pretty yeah. much on the outs, but um, but uh, I don't know, maybe. We'll see how much we see him in the playoffs since he's on his last legs with the Sounders. Um, so, yeah, we'll see what happens um, in this game. But uh, we, we we have no excuses to get out. We, we No, have, you should probably beat Houston. We have to advance. Matt, any thoughts? Uh, I wouldn't write off Houston like that. Uh, they have their newcomer who scored his first goal, I think. Um and the they're team well has- coached. They're well coached, and they they have an exciting um, style of ball, uh, style of game in possession. So hmm. I wouldn't write them off. Uh, they just might write back. But I agree. <laughs> okay, them. okay. They're not pulling a Gino. They're not. They're, no, just no. We're, <laughs> we're gonna move straight on from that because that's not happening. Um, <laughs> our shout out to Minister- Gino Smith, though. RSL Minnesota. Oh, wait, um, shout out to this, was, this this was a pretty 50-50 um matchup. Um Ethan, who do you got? Who do you got advancing for? I I lean towards RSL for this. Um really? especially when they're they at home. To, they've been struggling a little bit. Yeah, but I just think RSL at home are hard to beat. Um uh, yeah, it's true. But they're they have yeah. the altitude. It, um, mm-hmm. it yeah, I don't know. It's really this is Probably a vibes pick. I feel like Minnesota. Min- yeah, Minnesota have not had the most playoff success in their short history. Um, I mean, they made it to the Western Conference Final. In they did. They did. Yes. And we uh, we all know how that ended. <laughs> yeah. Um, Uh, Yeah, just kind of of a vibes pick just with RSL here. It just feels correct to me. Yeah, I I, I just in general, I think I like Minnesota as a – Minnesota just feels like a nicer team than RSL. Mm -hmm. Um, I I, I continue to find RSL annoying, so I root root for (laughs) Minnesota. But this is very 50-50. Matt, do you have any thoughts on this matchup? Uh, I would pick RSL if they can find their early season form that saw. Um, I mean, it's not even early season, but like that that saw that that, that manufactured and created a MVP candidate at striker. Yeah. Then we are we're talking about a real team that's that's dangerous uh, going forward and okay defensively. So yeah, R- RSL, give me RSL. 
And then uh, the two to seven matchup is LA versus Colorado. Now Colorado, to uh, if match prediction is going to come be correct, uh, Colorado has to advance to the to the. Or actually, we match. Yeah, that's what playoff. I was. I was I just going to I think that. they have to advance, but I guess I guess technically because match prediction was just to win a playoff game. So if they win one of the games in this series, does Matt's prediction come true? I think Matt I thought, maybe could say that, but I don't. I thought I don't we had this discussion, and I, I, I stood on, I stood on it. I said I want a series, and I'm going to get a series. All right, All right. Colorado beats the Galaxy. All right, that's fair. That's two I, out I, of three. I do not see that happening. I, I, I mean, I think <laughs> it's not going to matter because I think the Galaxy are going to take this series two zero. That being oh, said, wow. okay. that being yeah, said, I, I'm also calling a sweep. <laughs> that yeah. being said, I feel like the majority of predictions I've seen so far for the playoffs have uh, the Galaxy going all the way to MLS Cup and winning MLS Cup. Wow. Um, Mosley, yeah, I feel like the majority of predictions are showing – the conference final in the West being LA Galaxy versus LAFC. And even though the game will be at um, LAFC, people have the Galaxy winning. And then on the other side, they have Columbus. Columbus has already taken out into Miami. So the Galaxy win. Do you? I, I, I just, I still don't like. What a turnaround that would be for the Galaxy for how shit the Galaxy have been recently. But I just don't – it doesn't feel like the year that the Galaxy win the MLS Cup. Um, It feels yeah. like – just no one – can I also say, to, like, no one's really talk, – no one is talking about Marco Royce. No one is talking about him. Oh, uh, yeah. I forgot like, he was on the team. They have him now. <laughs> um, Matt, do you think they – so, I mean, Matt, you said that the – you you really think uh, that uh, the Rapids will take them out? Absolutely not. I <laughs> I do not feel confident in my playoff prediction because the LA Galaxy are that good. Are, are uh, they good okay? Enough, are they going to be not good NFC? enough to win everything? Not good enough to win yeah. everything. Um, I would pick them over everyone in their little group. I would pick them over RSL, Minnesota, Colorado. Um, I would pick them over Seattle, Houston, Vancouver. And then the El Trafico in the conference final would be an awesome, that really would interesting be matchup. Sick. I would not know who to pick. Um, Pull in the Rose Bowl. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I would not know who to pick. Would you go, uh, man? You go to the, you yeah, try I'd and go, go to that game. I would totally go. That would be awesome. Um, you might but, have to buy your ticket now. They have again. I don't. I don't just, see it coming. I you should do just not buy it. Buy a seat at the Rose Bowl <laughs> in advance. Uh, All right. Yeah. All right. I don't. Go. But I. By the way, I think. I think anyone is losing to either Cincinnati, Columbus, or uh, Miami. Miami. I don't. I don't hmm. think it really matters who comes out of the West. All right. Let's move over to the Eastern Conference. I think it's kind of crazy that he brings up they brought up Cincinnati as that threatening with how much they've struggled in the second half of this year uh first off uh, just mention the wild card game here Montreal hosting um Atlanta and Atlanta won after having the lead uh, Montreal battled back they get a late penalty um so Joseph Martinez can tie it up and the game finishes 2-2 and then Atlanta won five to four on penalties, um, because Brad Guzan saved a penalty. That is Atlanta moving on. Um, so Atlanta moved on to play Miami, and obviously we know now that they have already they're already down in um, in the series. Um, but this very well could have gone the other way. I mean, Atlanta scored first, um, and. Uh, Brad Guzan, uh, he stood on his head. Like he had a really good game, um, and kept fantastic. Game. Ad- kept Atlanta in this game, um, and if it's not for Jordi Alba scoring a great goal, an insane. Yeah, this is goal. what I don't get about Brad Guzan. I don't know how he lets this one go past him. It, it was like 
but he was saving every single shot that Messi took. You're it was not, like you're, he, you're, you're gonna it was blame like him he, for he made a deal with a witch or something, and he got a spell put on him that like Messi would not score, but nobody else was like affected by this. You you can't. No, Messi you could not score, blame the but other Miami players for could. this. For this, guy I'm not. I'm not up. blaming him for it. It's just confusing to me how he saves all of these other crazy shots, but this one goes past him when it feels less remarkable than the other ones. It's, it's, it know. is true. Where, where was this when we were trying to qualify for the World Cup in 2018? <laughs> when he was, you know, younger and, and you know, it makes yeah. sense for him to see, uh, you know, un- still be playing. Uncharacteristically great performance from Brad Guzan here. Really weird for me to even say that sentence. Um, do do we think they have any? Do they have a chance? Do do they have a chance to upset um, Matt? They got two more two more games. No. Can they force game three? No, Will there they... be a game three? Nope. Definitely not. <laughs> All right. No. No game three. No we game three. Heard it here first. Yeah, um, I'm a little more optimistic. I think they're going to Atlanta if their fans show up. Which they haven't really been doing this season, but if the they fans will. show up, they will for Messi. Yeah, if the fans show up and Guzan plays like that again, I think they could force a, a game three. Will they win the game three? Probably not, but I think that they could force a game three. The way I see it, Atlanta threw their best punch, and Miami threw their worst punch, and Miami won. Mm. And I, I don't think that'll happen again. Um. The next game is uh, Orlando uh, versus Charlotte. Um, I think this uh, is going to be pretty easy for Orlando. I don't give Charlotte uh, much yeah. of anything. Um, I think uh, which and if that happens, then we'll get the uh, Florida matchup uh, between Miami and Orlando. Mm-hmm. Um, anyone have anything to add about that matchup? I think you're not giving Charlotte enough credit. I think they could challenge more than than you uh, insinuated. Hey, Patrick Azimon has been having uh he's been playing well. He's been a good striker for Charlotte this year. Mm-hmm. Uh but ultimately I do think Orlando will go through. I they do have Ladero. So that that is a big plus for them. We know well, what he does in the playoffs. He's been quiet this year. To put uh, it lightly. Uh, this moves into the three versus six matchup, which is NYCFC versus Cincinnati. Um, Ethan, uh, take us through what do you expect from this game? Yeah, this is this is an interesting game. Obviously, we've had an interesting season with Cincinnati this year. Obviously, there was the game in in League's Cup where we went up two nil against Cincinnati, and then they scored four unanswered to win four two. Uh, later on, we beat them, I think, in Cincinnati. Um, so who knows what's going to happen here? I mean, obviously, Cincinnati are, you know, the better team. Uh, because, I mean, they're Cincinnati. They've got Lucho Acosta, who is still a great player, still one of the best in the league. But not nominated for MVP. Not nominated for MVP. Um. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's Cincinnati are in a weird spot this year. They've they're still great, but they've also lost some of their they've lost some of the bite in their team. I feel like they're not exactly the same team they were last year. Um, so I mean, we'll see. I really think that this, I think a lot of a lot of stuff could happen here. I mean, first game is in Cincinnati. Um, they're good in Cincinnati, uh, obviously. Uh, second game is going to be at City Field. We'll see what we'll see what happens with that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, what, do, what do you guys think? I because I really think that I, I think I kind of think this could go either way. It really depends on which. Teams yeah, I think NYCFC up. has a really good shot at this. NYCFC has been good has been good this year and Cincinnati has been struggling of late. Um, I think they have not been as convincing as they were last season. Um, and 
they have forward problems. Like, uh, mm. like, uh, like while uh, Lucho is good, he's not a forward, um, and uh, their their main forward, um, like, it, like they really just haven't solved the where are goals coming from when yeah. it's not Lucho. Um, they haven't filled. They the haven't solved that. Yes, goal. exactly. That's what I was gonna say. Um, Sorry. <laughs> Um, no, it's it's you're good. Um, so to, because of that, um, I think NYCFC has a chance. I think this will go to three games, and it could mm. be, and there could be a, a penalty shootout. Oh. Matt, what do you think? I am, but yeah, uh, I am still on the talented Cincinnati train, and it has very little to do with how good NYCFC is or is not. I think I think Cincinnati is really good. And I think their talent will show through in the big game. Honestly, I for me, this depends on what NYCFC team shows up to these games. Uh, NYCFC have been wildly inconsistent this year. Yeah, what um, do they have to do differently than they than they did against Montreal? Just you, you gotta you gotta finish chances. We had so many chances in the early half of that game uh, that just did not go. That that just, that just we're left unfinished. We need to be more clinical. Got to finish our chances. Uh, thankfully, uh, Alonzo Martinez is usually pretty good at that. Um, uh, Alonzo Martinez had a breakout season this year. Uh, second highest goals per ninety in the MLS, just under Lionel Messi. Uh, really phenomenal stuff. Uh, from a relative newcomer, um, we did sign him in the latter half of last season. So, you know, he was ineligible for newcomer uh, this year, but uh, Maxi Morales did, did get, it, it, he is a finalist for a um, comeback player of the year, uh, which I think he should win. I mean, he recovered from an ACL injury at like 37 years old and he's come back uh, as good as, as good as new. Um, so I would like to see him win that. Um but yeah, it's just it really depends on what NYCFC team we see. I mean, we can't we just we we have to be stronger more and more organized. Obviously, we scored three goals in the first 30 minutes against Nashville. Uh we can do that against Cincinnati. The only issue is after we scored those three goals against Nashville, we sat back. And you can't do that against Cincinnati. You can do that against Nashville and get away with them scoring one goal on you. Cincinnati will punish you if you, if you give them that opportunity. Um, so we can't sit back in this game. You know, if we get a lead, we have to keep fighting. Um, so I'm hoping for a lot of grit uh, and a lot of fight. Maybe, uh, maybe I'd like to see Andres Perea get a start in this game. He's got a lot of fight in him. He's a really entertaining player. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. It's I really see it as a toss up. Um, Cincinnati are the like you know quote unquote better team, but I do think we could beat them. It just depends on on the mentality of the team. Uh, last game in the Eastern Conference is uh, Columbus versus Red Bulls. Uh, this is the can both of these teams lose matchup? I think this is <laughs> pretty easy that uh, we expect Columbus to um, advance. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll get. Uh, yeah, it's interesting that we could we could either get um, th there's the possibility that we could get the Hudson River Derby in the semifinals yeah. or the Hell is Real. Um, I don't think that will happen. I think it. I think it's going to be um, one of the odd matches of that. It, <laughs> we will not get a rivalry there. Um, that being said. Um, my main thought on the Eastern Conference is just I I literally do not care who it is besides Miami. Um, <laughs> I, I, I want Miami to lose. Um, it's that a would failure. be fantastic. It's a failure for Miami. This season is a failure if they don't win MLS Cup. I mean, they are mm -hmm. the most talented. It, 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 it's, I think we, we have to keep saying saying it that Miami again was the worst team in MOS. They they literally were cheating 
Um, and they were the worst <laughs> team in MOS. Yeah. Um, and now they are one of the best, and it is because they have the best player ever to play the game. Mm-hmm. Um, so if they win, I mean, it's just like, it's not going to be impressive if they win. It's just going to be like, you should have won. It's like, sure. It's the same. It's kind of the same thing with the World Series right now. If the Dodgers win, mm-hmm. it's like, sure. You're, you, you you bought all the best players. You should win. <laughs> Same thing with yeah. the Yankees. It's like you bought all the best, but you should yeah, win. It's not yeah. impressive. It reminds it, me of the Brooklyn Nets with, yeah. you know, Kevin Durant, James Harden, and Kyrie Irving. Uh, let the, famously did not win. Famously did not win. Um, but that's one of those things you get those players. Um, and, like, there is there is no higher ceiling. Like, you have to win a championship with a team like that obviously the nets didn't uh because they you know decided not to hire a real coach um Mm -hmm. but that's that's this is not a basketball show not that i know much about basketball but uh those nets were an embarrassment boston celtics are winning it all this year again back to absolutely this is i saw this is we are we are about to watch the second most dominant regular season team of all time i saw a tiktok last night of a boston celtics fan who was wearing a shirt that said um it said like osama bin laden isis Kyrie irving (laughs) like it was okay (laughs) which is crazy which is an understatement actually about Kyrie irving look Kyrie irving is not a good guy like at all I don't know okay. why the Celtics still hate him so much. So, like, move on. <laughs> it's yeah. It just he was just a signing, and it didn't yeah. work out. I don't yeah. know why they still hold so much, like, such a big grudge over. With that, we're gonna move on to. Uh, uh, with that, uh, let's be, now that we've gone over the playoffs, uh, season is over, so we got a score update to talk about. Our, our, We'll, we'll, we'll look at both. We we talked about last week. We already awarded, uh, we already awarded one of the awards. But let's bring up uh, the standings for the uh, game of the week predictions. Matt ends up taking home the victory. Correct, just over fifty percent. He gets a. T- That's pretty uh, good. With the with three correct options. predict, 18, 18 points, Matt finishes with, Ethan with 16, me with 11. Congratulations, <laughs> Matt. Anything you want to say? Uh, I want to thank. Um, that's great, Matt. But let's get. To, home that's game. great, Matt. We don't care. We're going to get to the competition that people do care about. <laughs> Uh, there, that's that's for you, Matt. I I suppose yeah. the uh, the trophy is hanging up back there. Ethan, Ethan, no one cares about this one. But let's get to the competition <laughs> that people you. do care oh, about. Oh, Matt's got an Oscar. The final, cool. the final Golden Boot standings. Did you get an Oscar? The for winner this? <laughs> in th- or in third place, we have Matt. That's that's podium. Points. That's podium, baby. That's the true. Real, <laughs> the real loser is that Matt finished with sixty-eight points. Like honestly, I think the real one, loser is that Sharu got, got one point. goal. Um, yeah. Yeah. Will they? Will he turn on in the playoffs? In second place, no. we have Ethan with ten more goals than Matt. <laughs> Seventy-eight goals. Who is left? Which means who's number the one? Yeah, we're supposed to announce of golden boots competition. We've known this since one, the, like, the beginning of the season. With we just, we just gotta one hundred like. and one goals. This is, is ridiculous. Next. <laughs> let's go. Let's bring in the horn. This is we got to get our own horn buttons. This is uh, this is like totalitarianism here. We got to This is dictator. Wait, let me do some math. Let me figure something out. I'd like to point out that De La Vega just got one goal. De La Vega only got one goal, but I want so so. Uh, yes, we have 
you're watching on YouTube, if you want to look on YouTube, you can see the totals of everyone's goals. Yeah. I have made I have made sure that I did everything correct. Uh, remember, League's Cup goals count, and you get yeah. the goals. Um, you get the goals after you picked them. Um, What's really interesting? Fact? Oh, yeah. Math fact. Yeah. Sure, man. Uh, I beat math you. Fact? I beat you percentage wise by more in the uh, game of the week than you beat me in the Golden Boot Challenge. <laughs> you, you had 61% of my score. Take, I have 60, 68, 67% <laughs> of your score in this. Game. You know, Matt, you can take that. But you know <laughs> what also I, like what, like what, what that, also like I, I would take? Is, I mean, like, we've known for a while that, that the six people who I picked at the very beginning uh, uh, have been destroying. Um, and while they did very much carry my team um, with how yeah. – I mean, Chicho slowed down, finished with. Only yeah, that's goals, interesting. He kind of, he really um, kind of plateaued there. Um, but uh, after Christian Benteke and Suarez and um, also Lucho didn't score um, that much. Um, yeah, it's still crazy that I pick, how, with how late I picked Benteke and you guys were like, like Dude, you guys didn't even not, think to pick him. He, he was not good what last year. He scored year. ten goals. He scored ten goals last year. Ten goals is nothing. Like that's. That's an average MLS striker. We we are talking about an aging player who I didn't think was going to play 90 minutes a game, who was on a bad team. I there's like not like congrats for being but it's, it's he was not like there was he was not the obvious pick, you know what I mean? Okay, but but you guys definitely were like uh no. yeah, yeah, but but uh we talked about that way more than um did than then Ethan's a Spria pick, uh, which that's like true. like um, which I think that's that's still <laughs> the funny that's the funniest pick. That's the funniest pick. I had a strategy and it didn't work out. Okay, um, I'm so happy I was, that I, I was strong the, uh, and long, mark. and that's the best. That's the best way to be. When we picked um, these teams, I was so unemployed that I went and see who did the best job compared to. Uh, uh, the other MLS podcasts, Golden Boot team. And by the way, I picked the best according to the experts. <laughs> uh, for the off for this season. That being I, said, that yeah. that being said, I do want to add again because of what I'm saying. Um, so my my team of six was doing well. If you just add up the goals of people we added mid season. Um, and then last, um, I still beat you guys. I had 18 goals. Um, I had 18. Ethan had 17. And Matt had 11. And uh, I down, picked last in all team. those. Yeah, you got really, a culture issue. Matt, you your whole team, my team. Matt, your whole team really <laughs> was really was a letdown. Just every time you picked them. Um, Absolutely. And then your goal, your goal team fell off a cliff. Yeah. Um, I mean, really, Yaku if it Marcus wasn't for Buanga, hit. if it wasn't for Buanga, and Brian White also, I mean, he fell off, but really, it was it really was only Buanga doing anything good for you. Yeah, roughly. Uh, the uh, could have been different um, if Bu Penza left. Um, I didn't think. Uh, I mean, uh, I, again, the Yakumakis pick. It seemed like a good pick at the beginning. Um, it wasn't super yeah. clear that he was going to be leaving. Um, no, we all thought that Buanga was going to leave. Um, I think one of uh, another crazy thing about uh, this season. It's still crazy that no one's picked Diego Rossi. Um, Diego Rossi finishes very high up in the Golden Boot standings. Um, and yeah. no one picked him. Um, I don't feel bad about that. I will not pick former LFC players, but definitely a funny one. Um, Paul Rothrock finishing with three goals. Love to see it. So proud. Um, yeah, I can't wait for season two. I can't wait to run it back and score two and, and get over 100 goals again. <laughs> well, how are we doing it? Is it a keeper? Do we get a keeper? I think I think we should I think we should get one keeper. <laughs> um, 
So uh, we, we, who are you keeping? It seems easy for it seems easy for for Ethan to decide that. I, I we, right. Yeah. Well, let's not decide who we're keeping Espria, now. Baby. Season two. Let's go. <laughs> Well, I'm curious because I your keeper situation is actually yeah, not it, that enviable. You it's a I mean? it's a harder it's a harder pick for mm. me because it's like, do I pick Ben Teke? Do I pick Suarez? Do I pick Lucho? Which of the old? Do I thing? take Paul Rothrock? Do no. Paul Rothrock <laughs> go to boot 2025? I mean, I have to. Are, I have to keep. Are you going to take either Messi, Messi or Cucho? But Cucho could if you, leave. If, if you pick Cucho over Messi, what a statement that would be. I'm probably going to pick Messi. Ethan, I mean, we're Matt, not doing Matt this. Matt also has a, has a hard pick. Like, it's like, which, are the, which one of these people? I guess Buanga is locked, is yeah, locked what, what down are we talking about here? For, <laughs> for like three more years. So, okay, maybe it's easy. But I don't know. Maybe you want to pick Tim Ream. Maybe you think, think so. you, <laughs> yeah, you, you've been so high on how on how good he is. I, I could get, I could go crazy up. and pick Giroux. You could, you you very well could. Hey, I I mean, I, I, I he can't have a worse year than he's had so far. <laughs> Absolutely, there's yeah. no way to go but up. Um, let's look at the award. Let's look at our season predictions as well as the season has came to an end. Um, start with our MOS Cup winner positions. Um, I'm completely out of this as Philly has not made the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Um, shocking. Really, the downfall of Philly this year has been insane. Um, I would like to point out that my prediction, my prediction was correct just a year early. The season before this one, right. I predicted a Philly flop, PH, and it came true. Yeah, okay. Um Matt, Just throwing that out there. Matt, Matt's still the only person who picked uh, Miami to win. Yeah, that one feels good. We look at Golden Boot. No one ends up getting that correct as Benteke takes it. Um, but, yeah, uh, but um, I mean, like, I had to take Suarez after I picked him to win the Golden yeah. Boot. And he, uh, he did good things for my team. Um, and the Lucho pick for Golden Boot, that's honestly not that bad. Um, wooden spoon re- recipient. Um, obviously, San Jose gets the wooden I got spoon closest this year. Um, Ethan takes Chicago. Me and Matt both take Toronto. I mean, Toronto is still just a joke. I mean, they, they should terribly. Toronto unfair. should should get they they get a wooden spoon of sorts of their own, <laughs> even though they didn't even finish last in the Eastern Conference because. They're just such a joke. The fact that Lorenzo Insigne is the second highest played player in the league um, Mm -hmm. and that they're not in the playoffs is just absolutely insane and should not be happening. Um, But uh, Chicago ends up obviously being below them. Um, uh, Speaking of which, uh, we didn't talk about Nashville beating Chicago in the Burhalter versus BJ Bull. Um, Matt, anything you want to add quickly about um, this result? Uh, yeah, well, you're looking at 2025 champions when you look at a result like that, and there's no <laughs> doubt in my mind. Um, and BJ's got the boys ready to play. Uh, BJ's got the boys buzzing, and uh, there is nothing but excitement in Nashville. There's electricity in the air for this team next season. All right, we we heard it here first. Nashville's winning MLS Cup 2025. Absolutely, you can <laughs> staple that to my forehead. I'll get a face tattoo. Uh, all right, I'm, I'm we're gonna hold. I'm holding Matt to that. Matt, <laughs> Matt, Matt's gonna get. Matt's, I'm googling. Matt's gonna be LA looking tattoo like tattoo artists. Sorry, Matt's gonna be looking like uh, Post Malone with a fa- face tattoo. Come December head. 2025. Exactly. Matt, do you like Magic the Gathering? I heard he likes that. I do like Magic the Gathering. It's you you oh. and Matt and Post Malone. It's like I've never played like Magic this. the Gathering. Magic the um, Gathering is pretty cool. It's pretty uh, cool we game. look at Goalkeeper of the Year. The only one of us who has a Goalkeeper of the Year um nominee is Ethan, who uh yes, picked too. Patrick Schulte, who um honestly is uh, the the one 
person nominated for goalkeeper of the year who probably shouldn't be there in my opinion no the one who really shouldn't be there is hugo Lloris. he's i mean to be fair mid. i mean hugo Lloris had a really good season i don't actually think that's that's no, fair but, like, but but stefan fry stefan fry should be there matt Fries should both be there over both shilty and yeah Lloris. matt Fries should win um, biggest storyline. Um, so my prediction for biggest storyline um, was Messi would play in less than 17 games. Ended up playing in 18. <laughs> so I consider this a win that I, I like. I thought about lo- I saw load. I saw load manage load management, and I'm like, Messi plays in any game he's available for. Um, He's gonna get injured. He's gonna be away on international break. I got yeah. I, technically I got this wrong, but this I, I I'm proud of of saying this. Um, it wasn't an awful it. prediction. Um, and and it wasn't a good prediction. But and it I awful. make I made this prediction, and I also said that Messi would win MVP. And it is crazy that he 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 missed. Um, 16 games and he he's gonna he should win mvp he is clearly the most valuable player right now um for other predictions we talked about we've talked about that matt um matt's is colorado playoff win we'll see if that happens um ethan was wrong miami has made the playoffs yes Um, i was i was pretty wrong about that uh, but uh back to mvp Ethan, you predicted that Lucho would win the MVP award again, um, mm-hmm. as he has before. Um, he is not nominated. It will be either Suarez, Messi, Benteke, Evander. Um, it's not going to be Evander. Or Cucho. Even... Yeah. Evander, um, should, like, they should have taken away Evan- Evander's nomination after that Vancouver game. Yeah. Um, it's funny that it comes out right before that. Um does anyone else have a chance to take this away from Messi, or is this going to Messi? Does Cucho have a chance, Matt? Um, no. Messi's the greatest player of all time. His impact is unbelievable every time he's on the field. Yeah. Um, Ethan, anything to add, or do you think it's pretty? It's pretty determined. I think the biggest opposition is Cucho. Um. And I would probably give it to Cucho. Um, We've heard you say a lot this year. or yeah. I mean, and if you haven't seen it on the show, you've said that a lot in our group chat that Cucho is the best player in the league. Yeah. Awesome. You stand by that. Because sometimes you just it, – it, it when you watch him play, he'll do something and you just go, what the fuck? Like it'll just – it'll come out of nowhere. He'll turn on his pace or – you know, he'll he'll turn a player inside out and then all of a sudden he's sprinting down uh, the pitch and he's coming at your throat. Um, and then he'll, he's most likely going to either score or assist somebody. Um, and I think oh. when he's playing really well, he probably is the best player uh, in the league. Uh, obviously, Messi, nobody can really beat Messi, though. Um, what yeah. I will say is that next year, Pedro de la Vegas. No. <laughs> Pedro de la Vegas. 2025 you know MOS MVP. It's Schaffelberg. Cut to a year. It could be Schaffelberg. Yeah. Better yeah. chance, way better chance than Pedro de la Vega. My one, God. one year from now, we're going to have our show. We're going to, the show is going to start. Um, and it's, it's going to be start, Alonso It's going to start with a clip. It's going to start with a clip of me saying that Pedro de la Vega is going to be the MOS MVP. And it's going to be because he has scored 40 goals. It's... And the Sounders <laughs> have broken the points record. It's um, going to be. Which is important because Martinez the Sounders have done it. So that's, so, so that's what. Schaffelberg will be on his way to Real Madrid for $200 million. Yes. 365 <laughs> days from now. And Nashville will have also beaten the points record that the Sounders broke. Yes, exactly. they will have taken it away from the Sounders. And I got three names record. for you: Alonzo Martinez, Santi Rodriguez, and Malachi Jones. We can't forget about Malachi Jones. 
He'll be coming back next year. He's going to be exciting. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right. We'll be back next week, Saturday, November 2nd, um, uh, at 1 p.m. Eastern to discuss uh, the the first rounds um, of NYCFC and the Sounders. Remember to follow us on Twitter at WECB Football and on Instagram at footballslife.wecb. Uh, subscribe here on YouTube, Football's Life WECB. Contact the show at footballslife.wecb at gmail.com or at footballslife.net. Until next week, uh, remember to vote, everyone. Football, oh, football is, is live. live.